Hi everyone, welcome to the RV Podcast. This is episode 420. And this week, among other things, we talk about RV land available out west. Hi everybody, I'm Mike Wendland and this is my lifelong traveling companion and my bride, Jennifer. And um, it's been, this is, we're about ready to go into our 11th year of the RV lifestyle. Can you imagine that? Mm -hmm. We covered a lot of miles. Time flies. But we still got a lot of miles to cover. Hey, lots for you in this episode. We're going to start off in just a couple of minutes here with a very special interview about a new RV land development out west. Now, we know that this is something that a lot of people have been interested in, particularly since we have uh, spent much of the last year chronicling our adventures in Tennessee, where we uh, bought some land, and everybody says, we want land like that. They do, and they have expressed interest in large pieces of land to the West. Because uh, it's hard to find. It is really hard to find. There may be individual lots, like an acre or smaller, and there's like RV parks and campgrounds that sometimes sell ownership in lots, but it's part of a larger development. You don't have any say in that. Uh, we're talking about multi-acre packages like we found in Tennessee. Uh, it's very hard to, to find that. So we're going to talk about that in just a minute. Um, but also coming up in the program, uh, when we get to the RV News of the Week section, we have a story about uh, the diesel fuel situation which is worsening and uh, worsening in rather dramatic ways across the country with some warnings being sounded now we'll talk about that and of course we have their comments and your questions about the rv lifestyle so it's going to be a good uh, a good episode this week we're looking forward to it it will be now uh to start off we uh have some information this week about as we say something that we know many people are keenly interested in because one of the top questions that we get, and we get it over and over again, uh, has to do with the availability out west of multi-acre RV properties. Uh, so many people. Yeah, everybody wants a piece of property where there aren't a bunch of restrictions or, you know, like a lot of places you buy a lot, but then there are a whole bunch of rules and it's not that spacious of a lot. And uh, people just want a little elbow room. And many times they have like rules and restrictions that you can't really camp there for very long in an RV or you can't build or you have to build within a certain period of time. So finding places uh, like we have found uh, in Tennessee uh, is, has been a real challenge. And um, we heard about this development in Arizona some time ago, said we wanted to be reporting about it and, and people have been asking us for information ever since. Uh, well, today we can share that information. It's a place called Greenwood Ranch. And um, we'll put a link in the show description for those of you watching on YouTube. Uh, for those of you listening to the audio version, uh, you can go to Arizona RV Land, all one word, ArizonaRVLand.net. And we'll put a link to that in the show notes on our RV Lifestyle blog. And I found it in interesting that they're selling five acre plots. Yep. Um, they with call a, them yeah. ranches. They right. call them ranches. Out, well, they're out west, right? Yeah. With a starting price of 39900 Which is a pretty good price. Uh, uh, they call this area that um, Greenwood Ranch is in the Golden spur of the west and it's close to a lot of attractions a lot of the things in arizona you want to see like the grand canyon <laughs> yeah. yeah and uh vegas the, not far yeah, from vegas. vegas the colorado river naturally yep. you'd want to go see that if you're out there in sedona everybody that goes west wants to see sedona i think well anyway um for those of you watching the the video version of this we will put some photos over during the interview section and I will also intersperse those photos in the show notes that go on our RV Lifestyle travel blog. But uh, enough of us talking about it. Let's bring on our guest. His name is Eric Posniak, and he is with Western Land and Ranches. That's the developer of Greenwood Ranch in Arizona. Well, I'm happy to welcome to the program Eric Posniak from Western Land and Ranches, that's the uh, company behind this development, which is called Greenwood Ranches. 
And uh, I can tell you're pretty excited because you got a Greenwood Ranches shirt on there, uh, Eric. Uh, yeah. Tell us, tell us a little bit about this uh, this development. Yes, a a absolutely, Mike, and uh, thank you very much for uh, having us on here today. Uh, this is a, a very, very special project. Uh, um, I, I've spent a lot of time out there, and uh, I, I, I'll tell you, it's one of a kind. You know, we are located in what I call the heart of Arizona, uh, centrally located between Las Vegas and Phoenix. And uh, uh, I can't wait to tell you about some of the things that really makes this project special. Well, let's start with, uh, first of all, as I said be, before I introduced you, we have been kind of following this own your own RV land trend for about a year and a half now. And uh, we found a, a number of developments east of the Mississippi. This is the first like this that I have heard west of the Mississippi. And uh, I know you are right near uh, Route 66, right? Uh, Correct. Tell us a little bit about the area that you're in. So people can sure. visualize it. What are the, what's the nearest cities, for example? Yeah, yeah. Well, 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 first off, you know, when people think of Arizona or the West, uh, they are typically going to think of the desert. And what makes this project very, very unique, you know, I personally live in Las Vegas. And let me tell you, it gets hot in July and August. Where we're located, we're up just at the tree line. So there's it's green. You can expect cooler temperatures. Uh, we're seeing people from, you know, Phoenix, from Vegas, uh, from from all over the West that are looking for uh, somewhat of an oasis, you know, an escape from the heat. And this project absolutely delivers. What's it near uh, when people are visualizing the state of Arizona? What's, what are yeah. some of the cities? Absolutely. So as you mentioned, we are um, off the old historic Route 66, which uh, that, that has a wonderful story in itself. But we are located the closest city is going to be 38 minutes door to door, which is Kingman, Arizona. And, um, you know, when people look for properties and myself included, you know, one of the things that's very important is where's the grocery store? Where's a hospital? You know, when you get out West, you can find beautiful properties, but, you know, often uh, you, you're an hour, hour plus away from anything more significant than a gas station. And here in Kingman, I mean, we have a VA clinic, we have a hospital, Home Depot, contractors that will actually come out to our project and do work and lay cement. Uh, so, so that's a, that's a very strong uh, position to be in. Yeah. And, and that is, uh, so all the big boxes stores are there and that is a big, big deal. when you, when you're looking, uh, I wanted to talk about Greenwood ranches itself. Now mm -hmm. you are selling uh, property, describe the, the size of the property, uh, what the prices are, and then let's talk about what kind of utilities people uh, will want and how that uh, becomes available. You mentioned contractors. So, uh, yeah, tell us about it. A a absolutely. And, you know, I'm going to uh, let you in on a little confession here. Uh, I personally bought five acres out on this project myself. Uh, really? The, the first time I saw it, Mike, I fell in love with it. And um, really, you know, all the boxes checked off for me. And, you know, one of the big ones was utilities. You know, what are my options for utilities? You know, these are all five acre lots. Uh, we have electricity running through the middle of this project. And if you're not familiar with out west, you know, when you get into these rural areas, it's, it's a rarity to have property that actually has electricity, you know, within five miles, let alone running through the project. So, this project, uh, we have many lots that actually have electricity uh, in front of the lot. Um, the other lots, would it would be either next door, close by, or, or maybe not. And we've, we've actually sold an awful lot of land without power. Uh, that seems to be somewhat of a trend as well. Uh, as far as water, you know, again, we like options. So you have three different options. And it really depends what you're going to be using this land for, you know, full-time or part-time or a base camp. So you do have the right to drill a well. Uh, there's there's a few wells already on our project, and there's a whole bunch all the way, you know, all you know that surround our project. So you do have that right, and you know we can get into details at another point as far as you know depth and costs and things like that. But you do have that option. Uh, number two, which is my least favorite, uh, you can actually haul water yourself, which is very common out west. Uh, it's forty cents for every hundred gallons. And then number three, which is the option that 
I'm going to be doing. Uh, there's a company, K6 Water Works, that will actually deliver uh, up to 4,000 gallons of water for 240 bucks. Wow. Uh, so I, I don't feel like breaking my back. So I'm going to have it delivered to my little travel trailer out there and uh, keep it simple. Yeah. So that's, that is much better water availability than I have heard anywhere uh, out West. I mean, that's, uh, that, that gives you options. Uh, cell coverage, uh, Starlink, I bet would work great out there. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, funny you should ask. Uh, we just implemented Starlink ourselves uh, as a company out there uh, within the last 60 days. It works it works extremely well, but better than that, you know, we have cell service on our project, which again, that's another rarity. You get into these, uh, uh, you know, remote areas or semi remote areas and there's just no cell service. Well, uh, let me tell you, um, I, I can work from my trailer, you know, full time out there. Uh, if I wanted to, the scenery is a lot better than Vegas, but, uh, uh, yeah, the cell service is great. All right. Now, um, Access is another big thing that we urge people to consider when looking at property. Uh, I have seen some of the video. Uh, you guys provided some video, which we'll be showing on uh, the video version of the podcast here. But uh, those look like pretty good roads that you can get into that with. Uh, that's uh, very well maintained. and th They are some of the best roads and they are county maintained roads. That was another box that checked off for me. You know, uh, again, my experience uh, over the last eight, nine years with with projects, you know, sometimes you find beautiful land, but you might leave half of your vehicle on the road before you get to it. You know, uh, these are county maintained roads. They're spectacular. Um, I've had customers drive Teslas out onto this property. No problem. And they show up with big smiles on their face. Yeah. Um, tell me what's so special about Greenwood um, ranches. Uh, I guess the name kind of surprises me, Greenwood, the desert, but uh, yes. that might be my first clue. But what's so special about this place? Well, you know, I, I kind of mentioned the boxes checking off. So, so this is a rarity when you have everything that checks off. So you have, you know, out west, you have cooler temperatures. You have a, a, a very pleasant climate with green trees. That's one. Uh, the accessibility, which we just talked about, you know, fantastic roads getting in and out and county maintained. Um, being close to Kingman, you know, or a city with services, you know, that is a rarity. And then, of course, the um, uh, utilities running through the, the center of the project. Now, um, that, that's all kind of things we talked about. The, the thing that really makes this special, I, I really can't put my finger on it. But I'll tell you what, everybody that has come out to this project, as soon as they arrive, you just see their demeanor change. And they just go, oh, man, like this is just beautiful. There's just something very special about this land. And, you know, um, not every land you, you you get that same feeling. And, you know, we'll have people drive three, four, five, six hours, you know, whether from Phoenix or California. And they get out of that car and the first thing they say is this is beautiful out here. And yeah. um, it, it's just a special project. Now, uh you, what about uh, the the area's attractions? You mentioned Kingman isn't far, so you've got all that stuff. But um, the Grand Canyon. Yes, I'm thinking of all the stuff in Arizona. I want to see the Grand Canyon. Then there's Vegas and Lake Havasu, and these are all drivable from there. Yes, and I promise you, you will never run out of things to do and see uh, <laughs> from from Greenwood Ranches. So first off, you know. Uh, uh, I, I personally am on the hunt to go to all of the national parks in my lifetime. That's on my bucket list. And I'll tell you, this project, we are a day, within a day's drive to 13 national parks. Okay, we're, we're within an hour from the Colorado River, an hour and 20 minutes to Lake Havasu. You know, you've got Flagstaff, Sedona. I, I mean, it's endless. The Grand Canyon, you know, one of the wonders of the world. Um, there's caves to explore. I mean, it, it's just, it really is unlimited, you know, California, if you wanted to go to the beach, you know, you're a day away from the beach. I mean, Vegas, as you already mentioned, Utah with all the, all the, you know, national parks up there. Um, and you know what, I should mention one more thing since we're talking about national parks, uh, the night sky out there is amazing. Um, I had an opportunity about uh, a month ago to stay on my property. And I could not believe what I saw. And I mean, 
perfect shot of the Milky Way. So, of course, I did a little research and um, we're right on the fringe of, you know, one of the darkest areas in the country. Uh, no light pollution. Uh, it, it's beautiful. There is nothing like sitting around a campfire in the desert and looking up at that night sky. I mean, absolutely no experience in my RV lifestyle equals that. Uh, that's why we love the the desert ourselves. Well, let me get a little nitty gritty details here because here's some of the always sensitive stuff when buying RV land. What about HOAs? I wish I could tell you about one, but we don't have it. There's that's no good. HOA on the Green Road, uh, excuse me, on Greenwood Ranches. And uh, when you put your RV there, does it have to be, do you have to build on it as some states, many states require you to, you got to do this, you got to do that. What what kind of restrictions do we have when we take our RV out there? So very, very minor restrictions are in place. Okay, so there is no HOA. There are some very minor CCNRs in place, uh, mainly things that most people appreciate, like you can't have a junkyard. You know, we right. put that in there because if we don't, there's always one. There's always um, one. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what we you know, what we've learned over the years out here out west, and I'm sure, you know, um, around the country, you know, it's probably the same sentiment. But our customers really don't like being told what to do. You know, so we, we leave it open with options. So there's no time frame to build. You don't have to build anything if you don't want to. Um, you can come out on your RV. You can stay in your RV, you know, uh, three months, six months. Um, you know, it, it's pretty much wide open. I mean, you can do tiny homes, you can do a traditional home, you know, you can, you can just buy the land as, as a stopover, you know, you can Airbnb it, you know? So, I mean, really, we like to keep those options open for people. And then the other question, property taxes, five acres. Uh, what does uh, that going to roughly set somebody back in property taxes every year? Well, well, that's a great question. And uh, it's funny. Uh, all of our uh, California buyers think I'm not really telling them the truth here because they can't believe this. But our property taxes are about $90 per year. Uh, <laughs> yes. $90 a year. For that is correct. That is correct. In fact, I just got my personal property bill. It was seventy dollars. So, no um, that's amazing. It's never a deal breaker. <laughs> and uh, you you mentioned right at the top. I just wanted to go back and have you underscore that. You said there are plenty of contractors about who can come and and uh, you know put the if you want to get some gravel down or build a pad or put some concrete or build a storage shed. There are enough contractors in that area. Oftentimes in very remote areas, that's the hardest thing to find. But um, I suppose with Kingman, just 38 minutes away, you've got them, huh? Yes, absolutely. You know, from people that do septic systems to drilling wells to dropping gravel, laying concrete, uh, you, you name it. And yes, they are. We, we are pulling from Kingman. And uh, we've actually compiled uh, a whole list of contractors that we provide to all of our, our owners and buyers, you know, and. Um, as this community grows, there's more and more activity out there and uh, it's great. People share information and, you know, I think the contractors are getting on to it now too. Like, Oh, there, there's an awful lot of work out here yeah. and uh, that, that makes it uh, better for everybody. Well, I don't want to get into proprietary information, but I think it, it would help people understand a little bit. Can you tell us uh, how many lots have been sold? Uh, Rough idea who is buying and, and why do they say they're buying out there? Sure, a absolutely. So uh, we've had an init one initial sale so far, and uh, we've sold uh, approximately 50 or 60 uh, of these five-acre lots. Our, our next sale is going to be on November 12th. Uh, we have released approximately, or we will have approximately 50 lots available on November 12th. Something I, I'd like to mention real quick, too, that I forgot. So uh, with these five acre lots, uh, what we do, you know, aside from the road access being fantastic, we go ahead and get everybody started with a little driveway and clear a pad area. So, uh, you know, the moment you close, you can pull right onto that lot and start enjoying it. Um, so so that's one thing. But uh, uh, and, and I apologize. What was the, the first part well, of your question? My question is the, who, people that are buying. Who are buying it, and what 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 are they saying? Uh, why are they why are they buying that property? RV, it, it's building. It, it's it's really quite a mix. 
it's first of all, it seems like everybody seems to be cut from the same cloth. They come out there and they just see the beauty out there. Uh, we have a lot of people that are looking at this as a base camp as they travel out west in their RVs, you know, to have a, a base camp to set up because, again, where we're located, it's a good springboard to all these other uh, areas out here out west. Uh, so that that would be a big pull. You know, um, m most of these people are buying this as a um, at least near term recreational. Come out on the weekends, enjoy it, whether you're from Phoenix, Vegas, California, um, with the hopes of down the road, potentially making it a retirement, uh, you know, permanent residence uh, retirement uh, uh, type situation. So that's one group. We do have people that are very interested in doing the alternative homes, such as tiny homes and uh, things like that. And then, you know, quite frankly, something new uh, that uh, I've really seen recently, um, I've seen a lot of people uh, coming out and purchasing land because um, they're a little bit afraid of the economy and they'd rather have their money that's sitting in stocks or an IRA and into a hard asset and sit on it for eight to 10 years, enjoy the land and, uh, you know, go from there. All right. Uh, you mentioned November 12th is your next sale. Uh, we should tell people how they can get uh, in touch with you. And I th think it's through your website, right? That's what we do. And it's, uh, it, we'll put that address on the screen, but it's ArizonaRVLand.net. ArizonaRVLand.net. And uh, what do they do? They click on that and they basically make an appointment. Is that how it works? Yeah. So uh, you're going to get the option. Uh, you know, they're going to obviously pr we'll, we'll provide you some additional information. We, we've got some great video footage of this. We really like to show people what this land really looks like. Um, and then, you know, you have an option to uh, have a consultation such as a Zoom call like this or a phone call. Um, or you can simply just book your appointment, uh, you know, um, online. And, uh, you know, we always prefer to you know, really have a conversation where we can answer all those questions for people before you take the time and energy to come out and, and see this land. The land will the, the land will sell itself. Yeah. And again, these are five acre parcels. Correct. And the price? Uh starting at thirty nine nine. Thirty nine nine. And yes, property sir. taxes less than a hundred dollars a year. Yes. Wow. Yes. And there's there's no other fees involved, no other annual fees that you have to worry about. Simply pay your property taxes. Well, uh, Eric Bosniak, I want to thank you for making time with us from uh, uh, all the way out there in God's country in the West. And yes. you got me uh, anxious to go out there. I mentioned to our audience before I introduced you that we had planned to get out there uh, earlier uh, this year. And I had mentioned it. I mentioned just on my concept, we're going to Arizona and I have had uh, email after email from people said, where is it? Where is it? And so I figured it's better to get you on the program right now. And then when we make our visit, we can show it ourselves. But thank you for providing us some video that we showed on our YouTube version of this uh, of this interview. And I look forward to camping next year and looking at that Milky Way with you some night, Eric. A Excellent, Mike. Thank you so much for having us. Really appreciate your time. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, my lot is uh, is your lot. Come on out and enjoy it. I'll be there, bud. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Once again, if you want a direct link to that information that Eric was just sharing, it's ArizonaRVLand.net. ArizonaRVLand.net. We'll put a link in the description below on the video and in the show notes and all of that stuff. But impressive place. Um, the photographs, uh, I'm told, don't do it justice. Uh, it is even prettier than those photos. And uh, um, we can't wait to uh, to tell you more about it. We'll be interested in uh, maybe visiting it ourselves. Yeah, someday. I'm going to get very. I'm, I am getting curious, and I'm going to get even more curious. I just <laughs> love the continue desert. Continue talking about this. I just love the desert, and it's not so hot out. It seems reasonable now to go. Yeah, this is a great time. This is a great time, and a lot a lot of people are going out to uh, Quartzsite in January, and. Uh, now, there's no guarantee this place won't sell out because that's what's happened on a couple of these other land developments that we have found that if you miss your opportunity, they sell them out. Um, but I think this is, the, again, it's proof of a growing national trend of people buying RV land. All right, when we come back, we've got the RV news of the week, including an update on this diesel fuel crisis as it turns out to be emerging as so stay with us we'll be right back when we're on a road trip we always seem to find a way to stop at a camping world center there are over 225 camping world locations across the country 
and there's always one close by when we need parts and accessories for our RV or just want to shop. In fact, uh, we have so much fun with uh, Camping World, and as we talk about it as one of our sponsors, they have agreed to offer a 10% discount if you use the coupon code RVLIFESTYLE10 when you buy $99 or more in merchandise. You'll find everything you want from outdoor furniture and appliances, the ones you see us use in our videos and that we talk about here in the podcast. RV extras that include everything from camping chairs to fire pits, electrical accessories, must-have gadgets. Check them all out. And again, don't forget, use the coupon code RVLIFESTYLE10 when you visit CampingWorld.com. Tired of overcrowded campgrounds and competing for reservations, paying high fees for sites? Well, ownership is an emerging trend in RVing that might be right for you. It was for Jen and me. We bought some land just west of Nashville, Tennessee, in an incredible collection of mountaintop RV properties called the Woodlands at Buffalo River. These are 5 to 62 acre properties that allow RVs year-round starting at $79,900. And we loved it. The scenery is breathtaking and you can own it outright. It's not a timeshare. It's your property, your way. You can landscape, garden, bring your pets, build what you want to. There's high-speed internet. And it's so private. It's a great place to make your home base. No more calling around for reservations, ready whenever you want. And they're selling these properties by appointment, five to 62 acres, $79,900. Financing, big discounts available on multi-lot packages. For information, visit myrvland.com, myrvland.com. Welcome back, and now it's time for the RV News of the Week. Well, the big story this week is one that we have been reporting on now for a couple of weeks here in the RV Podcast, and that is uh, the diesel supply across the country is worsening. Uh, shortages are now being predicted. Um, a major fuel supply company has issued an alert uh, about diesel fuel shortages right now uh, in several southeastern U.S. states. So we've got Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee, North and South Carolina, and Virginia. Now, the company issuing this release is Mansfield Energy, and they're a, a major supply company. And they um, issued this release late last week. They, they noted extremely high prices in the northeast parts of the country as well. And here's a quote that they said. They said, poor pipeline shipping economics and historically low diesel inventories are combining to cause shortages in various markets throughout the southeast. Uh, these have been occurring sporadically with areas like Tennessee seeing particularly acute uh, challenges. It noted that fuel prices are up 30 to 80 cents higher for diesel um, than uh, what the, the market prices should be because of this tight supply. Mm -hmm. And uh, they say that fuel suppliers are going to have to uh, pull from higher cost options at a time when, you know, um, low high spreads in the market are much wider than usual. We talked about that last week on the podcast. Uh, they're having to literally a supplier go to multiple terminals to find supply. Uh, which delays deliveries and it strains local trucking uh, capacity. In fact, they say, and this is a quote, that the conditions are rapidly devolving. That's uh, a rather <laughs> that's, ominous term. <laughs> yeah, that's not a good word. In fact, they issued what they call an uh, alert level four, I think out of a scale of five. Uh, they say it's just so volatile. And again, uh, this, uh, this code red type alert that they said, uh, they're asking uh, for 72-hour notice for deliveries from people who are trying to get deliveries so that they can try and scramble and get enough. Um, and there's been concerns, of course, because, uh, as we reported last week, uh, data from um, energy information sources shows that the country only had a 25.9-day supply of diesel left, and that was as of October 21st. Now, hopefully those supplies kind of replenish uh, and this is a major concern, of course, because trucks, yeah, trains, yes, RVs yes. are are largely <laughs> fueled by diesel. Uh, in the Northeast, uh, fuel oil heats many homes and and prices there. That's picked up a lot of attention on the national scale, 
but um, the concerns are growing. And uh, those of us who drive diesel, we've got an RV uh, motorhome that's diesel, and the truck I use to pull our fifth wheel is diesel. <laughs> Lucky me, huh? <laughs> it, was, it looked really great last spring. But anyway, uh, we'll keep on taps, uh, uh, tabs of this uh, story, and we'll, we'll let you know as it goes. But uh, keep, uh, keep a look. We'll have a link to it on the uh, show notes. Okay. Our uh, California couple, ages 81 and 79, who reported missing by their families and became the subject of a search and rescue operation, were found safe camping last week near the California-Oregon border. So that's really good news. And the reason the loved ones got concerned was and panicked was no cell service. The couple was in daily uh, contact with their family as they headed out on a camping adventure in their Class C 2017 Ford for Winds uh, Motorhome. But uh, when that daily contact suddenly stopped for several days, uh, they got a little worried. Well, it was a big story because pictures of the couple and their description uh, flooded uh, all sorts of online forums and RV groups, including our RV Lifestyle Facebook group. People were worried about them. Um, and uh, fortunately, it turned out it was just bad cell signals. How did they find them? Well, a uh, search and rescue crew found them happily camping <laughs> in a recreation area near, near Glendale, Oregon. And the campground didn't have any cell service. So they were just fine. Happy ending. And we're so happy for them. But, you know, a good example. Um, you can't count on cell service all the time. Mm -hmm. But if you are out alone, it's always good to have people know where you are. And if you can't get through on a cell service in your campground, don't just go days without letting them know. Just say, hey, we're going to be here for a few days and there's no cell service. Don't worry. Now, that would have solved a lot of problems, I'm sure. I'm sure their family were, uh, told them all of that. But, <laughs> yeah. uh, but a happy ending. Happy ending. And another reminder about cell service is not ubiquitous uh, as we would like it to be. Uh, in the Smoky Mountains, they've had to shut down some popular camping trails because... The bears are gorging themselves, getting ready for hibernation. It's that time of year, time to eat all the acorns that you can find and berries. So if, uh, and this is a great time to go to the Smokies, the color is still on the mm -hmm. trees there. But if you have a favorite hike, you better check with the National Park Service website uh, at the, for the Smokies because they had to shut down several um several trails because uh, black bears are just uh, gorging themselves out there large numbers of them and they're trying to avoid that human bear contact most of the bears they're used sort of used to humans but you know it doesn't it just takes one one with a bad mood to make things get pretty pretty <laughs> yeah, ugly the truth. So, somebody's having a bad day so that somebody the, else ate all the grapes huh yeah so what are the trails that they're talking about so uh, let's see the trails that they're talking about where the bears are really having fun having a picnic <laughs> the gatlinburg trail near gatlinburg and the sugarlands visitor center and the Twin Creeks Trail between Gatlinburg and the Twin Creeks Science and Education those, Center. Those are really popular, popular places. trails. Yeah, the so. Science Center where everybody goes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, you just be aware of that. Yeah, they're probably going to be doing that till the first hard frost and the first uh, snow. And they, until the they bears decide, decide they to go to sleep. Take a long winter's nap. Mm -hmm. All right, what else we got? Okay, we've got something about uh, Mercedes-Benz recall. On sprinters. Yes, ah. uh, more than 100. 124,000 Sprinter vans built from 2019 to 2022. The vans could roll away while parked due to a wear-related issue. Isn't that special? Um, that would be us, I think, and <laughs> our, so, too. Um, our Mercedes. We have a 2022 chassis. so. And also many of the uh, Class B camper vans. Now, wait a minute. Uh, we have one of those affected vans, so uh, I have not received a notice yet. <laughs> well, uh, Merce Are you my notice? <laughs> Mercedes will begin notifying owners affected by the recall December 19th. So we'll have to watch our, our mailbox or however they contact us. You know, I never can figure out why they announce a recall to the public like this, but they don't send notices out for like, well, maybe they got to gather them all up or so. I don't know. But uh, yeah, so anyway... Because what happens is people, we report this and other people oh, let's report it and then everybody calls their dealer and the dealer says, I've got nothing yet, you know. So anyway, be aware that if you have a Sprinter built between 2019 and 2022, there's probably a recall out for it. And I'm sure it's a relatively easy fix. Uh, 
So there you go. That's the news of the week. Uh, you got stories we should know about, send them to us. Our email address is Mike and Jen at RVLifestyle.com. And when we come back, the RV questions of the week. So stay with us. When we're asked, what's the most important modification we made to our RV? It's an easy answer. Battleborn batteries. Battleborn batteries are quality, safe, reliable lithium batteries that allow us to stay out there off the grid longer. Lithium batteries charge faster, they charge fuller, they're longer lasting, they're maintenance free. And battleborn batteries are protected by a 10 year guarantee. Now, in our case, they just dropped into the existing AGM batteries that we have, and they'll probably be the same on your rig too. Battleborn battery experts can get those in your rig just like they did with ours. They can also match you up with the right cabling, the inverter, the charger, the solar controller, everything. Jennifer and I swear by our Battleborn batteries. They allow us to boondock off the grid. Check them out. Go to rvlifestyle.com slash lithium. rvlifestyle.com slash lithium. Welcome back, and now it's time for the RV questions of the week. Well, the first one is for you, Ooh. my dear. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Um, it says, hey, Jennifer, I have just binge-watched your channel. Really. Must have watched 100 videos. Ooh. I feel like we're best girlfriends. We are. So I am asking you this question. My husband and I have been RVing for the past two years. It's been fun, but so far our longest trip has been two weeks. He retires at the end of the year and wants to go full time. He is so excited about this and wants me to handle selling our house and getting rid of all of our stuff while he handles the trip planning. This is not the best time to sell a house. (laughs) And besides that, it really scares me to go full timing. If I'm honest, I am not nearly as gung ho on full timing as he is. He's sort of just bulldozing through with this. How do I get him to slow down a bit? I enjoy RVing, but clearly not as much as he does. Robin. And Robin, I don't know if your husband watches this as well, but he may be hearing this answer for the first time. So I hope you've talked to him before that. But but maybe he doesn't watch it. So. No, I don't. All right. The question was for you. So. All right. So um, I have never wanted to go full time. I want my home to come home to... That's just the way I am. So I understand you're not wanting to give everything up, but yet a lot of other people go full-time and they have no problem with it and they like it. If you do go full-time, you decide to go full-time, you can put some of your dearest treasures in storage with the idea that you might want to come back and pick up a little place someplace if you want roots. I don't know if you have children or family in a certain area that you want to stay connected with them a little bit. I can see why your husband, after all his years of working, is excited about doing this grand adventure and uh, selling a house right now. We're trying to do that ourselves. We are trying to sell our house, and it's been on the market two weeks, and one person has gone through. One. 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 And, I mean, it wasn't even up a week, and our agent was telling us to lower the price six or seven percent. So, I mean, it's not a good time to sell the house. And we were talking to one of our sons last night. He says, well, he said, you know, you'll probably sell it in spring. And uh, now, if, I, if I knew I could sell it in spring, I'd, I'd be excited. But now, I mean, we're, like, not, well, we're not going full-timing. No. Nope. Because you heard that. So don't be confused that that's not yeah. why we're selling the house. We're, we're moving to another part of the state. But. So not only do we have two RVs, we have two houses. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hopefully not for long. No, yeah, hopefully not long. Now... Uh, you kind of were giving her advice, advice to, to, you know, give it a try and all that stuff. But she's pretty clear, I thought, that she doesn't like it that much. And he's he, the word she uses is bulldozing his way through. I don't know how many years you've been married. I... So a little marriage counseling here now <laughs> from, from Jennifer. So, I mean, I don't know the two of you. Usually opposites attract <laughs> and then they attack. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're attracted to somebody because there's so much fun and all these ideas and everything. And I don't know, I'm kind of roots in the ground, hard to get going. I must have tricked you. So uh, anyway, think of that. I was this wild thing ready to go everywhere. Well, you do and go I, everywhere. Yeah. But I like, you just don't want a full time. Yeah, I don't want a full time. We have too much stuff and I want to work out. I want some place to work out close by. Wherever I go, I have to be able to exercise. 
Well, what about Robin? What advice do you have for her? Because she's asking you as your as your best girlfriend. Uh, <laughs> What would you tell her to do? Oh, well, I, Robin, I don't know if you're a person who prays, but I think I would sincerely pray about this. Maybe the two of you, you and your husband, both pray and you, talk to each other and figure this out. So she needs to yeah, tell her be her, flexible. Her feelings. Tell, tell her. everybody say how they're feeling, and uh, I don't. I got a feeling making lists and everything isn't going to affect this. About the the pros and the cons, I think your husband really wants to do this, and but, but she doesn't. I, so yes, that's. Yeah, That's you the really don't that, uh, want to do it. The husband really, I mean, but she wrote to liked, you, but the husband needs to understand that, I but think. But they've been doing it for two years, and she enjoys that part of it. So you're going to have to tell your husband that you enjoy it. Maybe a trip of a month or so. Try Maybe, or two even, yeah. you know. Go be snowbirds. Go slowly. Instead of just jumping right into it and swimming upstream. And you have a great excuse, Robin, because you're, it's, a t it's a tough time to sell, sell a house, house. So you can say, maybe we should not put the house on the market until spring or summer. And let's just try this for a while and make sure. Because the situations are changing. I don't know what kind of an RV she has, but she obviously needs to talk to her husband. They have, yes. They have to be honest with each other. And right? talking to me, she really needed your opinion about I can't about believe this. that. You were yeah. telling her to go for it. Well, yeah. you know, I figure you can you can get out of it. So what if I told you I wanted to go full-timing now? No way. <laughs> well, now that's not the advice you gave Robin. <laughs> well, we have a history of discussing this fully. <laughs> we have. We, because and, I, uh, at one point I thought, well, let's be full-timers. And I'm kind of glad we didn't. Um, kind of? Well, I, I've really come to enjoy being gone quite a while, or half, three quarters of the time, and then uh, I bring back a bunch of videos, and I can kind of just seclude myself in our little studio that we've built and edit them, and mm -hmm. I like that. And, uh, yeah. All right, so that was Robin's question, and oh, uh, I hope you don't mind I jumped in. Well, no, I'm but so glad you, that you jumped in. But you are... Two heads are better than one. You are Robin, Jennifer's best girlfriend, mm -hmm. so there you go. Yeah. Thank you for the kind words and watching Jennifer's video. So. Yes, thank you. All right, question. Now, from Jerry. Is Starlink worth it? I've heard you uh, complain of speeds while others say it's the best internet they ever had. Yeah, well, you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but um, it, it, it is, in some cases, the best internet. Generally, you need to be out west to experience that. As, as we have shared many times, there are several different tiers of service from Starlink. The best tier is if you are in a permanent location and you were able to get a equipment for that specific location. Fact is, most locations east of the Mississippi are oversubscribed and sold out. Only a scattered few areas uh, still have vacancies. Uh, we got ours in March, our satellite, our, sa our Starlink. Uh, I ended up w right where we happen to be coming to you from now, from Florida, from in Fort Walton Beach. I was able to get, that's sold out now. Uh, many other parts of the country, uh, particularly east of the, of the Rockies, are sold out. So you got to wait until there's more satellites online to use them. Unless you do one of the other terms that they have. They have a, a, t a tier called... Um, portable in which you can move from place to place and uh, you are um, I don't want to say throttled but you're prioritized you get service uh, prioritizing means that those who live in that area and are permanent get better service than those who are portable and traveling through the other service is RV service and that service again is um, prioritized, meaning that the home people get better service first, and then you get what's left of the data mm -hmm. that's available. So it's for both of those services. My experience, mostly east of the Mississippi over the past year since I've had Starlink, has been Starlink's performance is erratic at best, dismal more often than not. It is the upload speeds are unsustainable to do a live program uh, like our Ask Us Anything show or one of our live feeds that we like to do live streams. It just isn't enough upload speed. Um, you know, in the middle of the night, I can get pretty good download. Early in the morning, I can get good download. And then it kind of, as people come online and use it, it, it denigrates. The speeds denigrate. So uh, I'm not 
a firm believer in Starlink. Now, when we go west and we go visit that place in Arizona, I'm told the service is fantastic because it's in the desert, high desert. There's not uh, a lot of trees and stuff on the horizon to scramble the satellite signal, which is another problem we have found uh, oftentimes in our camping. Um, but in general, I'm glad I have cellular. I rely almost exclusively on cellular and Starlink. If I can get a good signal, I'm happy for it, but very rarely do I get a signal that is as good as cellular. So that's been my experience and many, many other RVers. So for those west of the Mississippi or have a permanent location, it is gangbusters. It's great. All right, those are our questions of the week. And if you have a question for Jan or me or both of us, just reach us uh, through our private email. It's Mike and Jen at RVLifestyle.com. Uh, thank you all for watching. We'll be back next week. And next week, we're going to talk about RV tires and what you need to know. So come back then. Happy trails. <laughs>